Hey, Harvest family, so good to be back with you. Session six with Sydney Jolson, Zeal to Heal Ministries. Uh, we're answering some que- uh, Sid's going to be answering some questions again in the session based around some feedback that I've got. So, Sid, I mean, I've loved this time, my friend. I'm like a, uh, feel like a, I feel like I'm getting born again, and again. And um, so, this session, we're going to answer another question. And the the question came through awesome. with some friends of ours are saying, "Hey, Sid, that's really good." and all for you but i've got way too many issues to sort out before i can endeavor to be an effective witness so what would you say to someone who's got super amounts of issues that they feel are a limiting factor Mm. for them to witness well first of all rich i think that when we when we're basing it on our issues then what what the problem is is we're not actually basing it on the grace of god we're basing it again then on our on our ability. And I'm confident of this. In Philippians 1 verse 6 says that he who started a good work in you yes. will bring it to completion to that day of Jesus Christ's mm-hmm. return. And so what he starts, he will finish. Yeah. He is the author and perfecter of my faith. And we live in the faith of Christ. And so I just want to encourage that person that that's where we need to find our ability. It's not about your faults and your your mistakes, your sin. Um, It's actually about Christ Jesus living in and through you. And so I want to just give a quick testimony that I felt that my life was filled with issues. Mm. I had so many issues that I needed a whole lot of tissues. All right. And I, I just... I, I just could not get over that. I had so many things that I was going through. But it's when I stepped out. Breakthrough. I started focusing outward. Yeah. I wasn't looking inward all the time. Navel gazing, me, myself, and I. But I looked outwards to how I could be a blessing. How mm. I could release this hope of glory inside. Yeah. You see, we have got this hope. And it says in 1 Peter 3 verse 15. That we need to give an answer all the time mm. to those who are asked for the reason for the hope That's right. that we have in Christ Jesus. Mm. We're to do this with gentleness and respect. But the thing is that because I'm a believer, I should have the most hope in the room. Glistening hope. You see, we have the hope of glory inside of us. And don't let your issues... And your faults and the circumstances that you're going through right now be a stumbling block or a stumbling stone for you. But instead, release the love of God. Speak and share the love of God. You're going to find that your issues are going to just, they're going to dissipate into insignificance. And Christ is going to become more and more significant to you as you go forward. So that's my encouragement. You know, we're all trophies of God's grace Mm. masterpieces of his love you know rich even now I'm I'm a I'm a minister an evangelist you're a pastor but we're not perfect the only perfect thing about us is the perfection of Christ Jesus his righteousness and so I'm definitely gonna sin less but I'm not sinless And so I am constantly leaning in for God's ability, God's grace Mm. in and through my life. It's, I'm either going to be sin conscious or issue conscious, or I'm going to be cross conscious. What am I going to be, if I keep on looking at my issues and looking at my past, I'm not going to, I'm not going to move forward. But thank God for the gospel. Yeah. It's, it's his righteousness in me that determines and qualifies me. So the more I renew my mind on that, it, it comes down to identity again, again and again, again and again. Mm. I'm confident in my relationship with God because of what Christ has declared over me and the Spirit of God is living in me. I become Christ conscious, no longer past conscious, sin conscious or issue conscious. Still got issues, but the more consciousness I have of Jesus yeah. is going to give me the confidence to step out. Wow. Yeah. In the book of John, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our righteousness. He's not looking to 
call you out and for every nook and cranny. He wants to remind you that you are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. In your circumstance right now, whatever you're going through, He wants to, wants to remind you that when God looks at you, He sees the perfection of Jesus Christ. It's that truth, that identity that we're talking about here, that gives us such confidence to step out, that don't let guilt, don't let shame rob you of making an incredible impact mm. today. Because a day without seeing the kingdom advance or taking an opportunity and seeing someone touched by the love of God is just a boring day. Mm. So live for Christ and let Him shine in and through you. Awesome. Okay, awesome. So, so the next question, in line with that, Sid, help me. I'm actually too busy to do this. Um, CEO of a business. I work for a business. My line of work, I can't. I'm, it's just, there's too much productivity in my life. I get home, I'm tired. Uh, I, don't, I don't even get to see my friends. Uh, you're talking about an effective witness. Maybe it's like because of the pandemic now, everyone's at home. Moms are going, hey, I'm homeschooling. I don't want to. What's going on? So, so people are caught up in, in life and caught up in busyness and trying to do work. And all of a sudden, and it's, it's our now that governs us. Uh, an internal perspective isn't governing us. Our now is governing us. So, so speak to us about the reality of busyness. It's not really the greatest excuse, but it's an excuse in people's lives. I understand it. I understand getting busy, even as a pastor. You know, me as a pastor, I'm like, hey, listen, all I can do is work with, with, with believers. Uh, what about me being an effective witness outside of that? Wow. Well, Rich, first thing I want to say is 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 13. And it says, don't tire of doing good. Mm. And I think part of this is really the, the, the lie or the myth behind here that is decommissioning people from being witnesses is actually not busyness. But it's about priority. Mm. So what you value, you'll make time for. That's right. And so if you value your identity as a child of God, as a witness, because that's part of your identity, you will live out your identity. You will be a witness. It's not something you have to do. It's your being. See, a doing is we all going to function and we all, that's everyone's ministry is to be a witness. In fact, it's not... Because I am an evangelistic gift that I do witnessing and evangelism only. I empower the body of Christ to do the work mm. of the ministry. And so I think also part of it is that what we've done is we've made witnessing an event-based sure. thing. Rather than it should be a lifestyle. Mm. So you've used scenarios now of CEOs and moms at home and the, this pandemic, this lockdown, well, actually, I think this lockdown has just been a test to see what is the foundation for everyone, their belief, and how things have been working. What is the health mm. around our lives? And actually, as us being and living out our identity as Christians. And so we need to be a people that we on our way. On our salt roots, as I, call, as I call it. That's not you have to put another thing on your plate to spin and now add this to your a whole bunch of things that you're doing in your life. I don't think anyone's up for that and needing that right now. Cool. I too am a domestic daddy at this time and a homeschooling father while my wife's doing her practice as a chiropractor. And, th and that's all good. So there's so many things that I'm juggling and holding at the moment. But... If I had to make it event-based, yeah. then I'm never going to do this. Sure. But instead, it's part of my lifestyle. So your salt roots are as you go to work. Mm. On the way to work, your colleagues at work. I'm sure there's some yet-to-be-saved unbelievers in your workspace. Those are the people God wants you to take opportunities with in meetings, outside of meetings. And so create some margin in your life where you're not just going from meeting to meeting, but instead you are 
giving space and time for conversations and significant moments when the Holy Spirit puts on your heart this person or there was a question or that you can attend to that because you're not in such a rush. If you are truly very busy, well, something needs to change because it's not healthy. You need to live with a healthy boundaries and parameters in your life for family, for friends, for work. You see, if we just to live and die to make money, what's the purpose of life? But in Matthew 6, verse 33, it says, First, seek the kingdom and his righteousness, yeah. and then he will add everything else to you. So I'd like to say, what is your foundation, your core belief? What is the very thing that you prioritize and value? I trust it's the kingdom and his righteousness. Because then we're not going to be dictated to either by the busyness and the demands of man. We'll give ourselves more mm. to the important rather than the urgent. Yeah. You see, when we're going about our lifestyles and our daily salt routes, I'm sure you're doing some fitness. You're doing a hobby, a recreational yeah. thing. Well, it's those people. If you're out kayaking or kayak fishing or helping someone load their boat from the car to the beach or from the beach to the car or taking a run with a group of mates. Those are the moments God wants you to add your pinch of salt so that you can make a great impact mm. in your life. So I want to encourage you, it's along your salt routes. Yes. It's along the way that God has put eternity in our hearts. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, that there's eternity in our hearts. Don't live just for today. But live for eternity. And we have moments every day to just nudge people, give them that pinch of salt to bring great kingdom impact and kingdom advancement. So the last thing I want to say, another tool, is that we can live life with a narrow lens or with a wide lens. A narrow lens is that we just about our business meetings or going to the shops and buying that product or um, what uh, the school run and just dropping off our kids, giving them a kiss and saying goodbye. Narrow lens is you just about your mission and your agenda. But a wide lens is when you are aware yeah. and you are sensitive to the people and you're hearing with your heart yes. the cries, the needs of people that maybe you could take an opportunity to bring an encouragement, to be kind, to sow words of life and to make a significant impact and transformational um, uh, uh, impact in, in people's lives. On our salt roots. Yeah. Wide lens, not a narrow lens. And you know what? I, when you're speaking, I'm going, that's like adventuring with God. Wow. Um, hearing you. I've got the opportunity to hear God in my day to day, on my salt roots. Yeah. I'm in my car. I can slow everything down and go, Okay, who, Lord? Exactly. Where's the opportunity, Lord? Yeah. A smile, a welcome. Jesus loves you. Yeah. Are you okay? You know, questions in our moments, and they can be quick. You just remember, as Sid said, the seeds that we sow. So I'm going, hey, it's an adventure. This is an adventure every single day. Yeah. Life's not boring. Come on. Life's full of opportunity. So, and Sid, thank you so much. Coming to the end of the session, friends. Adventure with God on your salt roots. Use what you've heard. Take some of the tools. Take the encouragement. Be the witness. Don't go and do witnessing. Be who you are as a child of God. And we'll see you in the next session. Ciao. Back. Session six. Six, six, six. <laughs> 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 Cover this land like you've done it